As you as you've already known, Data Platform Geeks organizes the annual conference and the fourth uh, year is Data Platform Summit 2018 has been announced. This is happening in August in Bangalore. Uh, from 9th to 11th is the three-day conference and we have two days of uh, full-day trainings on 7th and 8th of August. This is happening in Hotel Park Plaza, Bangalore. So please try and register for this conference if you are really serious about Microsoft Data Platform and want to talk to experts from all around the world. Uh, as I've said, like this is a three-day learning event. There is no uh, promotional or marketing event. This is a pure learning event where the speakers are coming from Microsoft product team, uh, Redmond, MVPs, MCMs, and worldwide industry experts will be talking at this conference. We'll be having seven tracks and about 100 sessions. So you'll get to interact with uh, speakers from various parts of the world. And this is a one great gathering of data platform professionals and AI professionals and also open source. So you'll have, you'll be able, able to interact with almost thousand people who are coming from different companies and working on different projects. Let me introduce you to the core team behind Data Platform Geeks. Amit Bansal is the founder and president. Myself, Manahapuna, I'm the vice president. We have Avanish Panchal, Prince Rasogi, Sandeep Pani, Yogesh Wapul, and Surbhi Agarwal, who are the pillars behind this community, Data Platform Geeks, and these are the guys who actually make sure that all these community events are run successfully. Please, uh, when you are at the conference, you'll be able to meet all of these wonderful guys in person. We also have our eDominant teams, who is a backbone for this community, who help us in running these events, maintaining the site, and also doing a lot of work that helps us run these conferences and all the events across India. And a special shout out and thanks to Microsoft, who has been a great support for us since the beginning, without whom this community is not possible. And if you are attending this webinar today, you would have already registered at dataplatformgeeks.com. If you are new to this site, please go ahead and explore the site because we have a lot of resources in terms of all the previous uh, events that have happened, all the slide decks and everything are available on the site. You'll be able to see all these webinars that are being recorded are uploaded to this site. You just need to register, it's free, and you'll get access to all the content which is free on this site. We also get, we also provide latest information about what is happening, like what events are planned, what webinars are planned, and also most importantly, who is attending the, who is speaking at the conference and who you will be able to meet at the conference. So you can keep track of all these things by just registering to dataplatformgeeks.com. By the way, I'm not sure if you have already joined these groups, Facebook and LinkedIn groups for uh, Data Platform Geeks. These are one of the biggest SQL group, uh, groups on, uh, on Facebook. So if you have any questions, we have experts in the group. And if you want to be one of the, one of the person who want to answer the questions, this is a place to be. So this, even though it's, it's a group, there's a lot of question and answers going on on this group. You'll be able to ask your questions and get the response immediately or if you are keeping track of the site, you will see any post where people are asking questions, you'll be able to go ahead and answer it. So please do join these groups. And now I'll let uh, Leila take over and start the session. Thank you, Leila. Uh, hi, thank you, Manuha. thank you, thanks so much. Uh, so I'm going to actually share my screen, so just give me a second. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we are able to see your screen right now. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, okay. So, uh, as Manuhar mentioned, I'm going to talk about the different possibilities that we have for doing machine learning inside Power BI, mainly in Power Query using our language. Uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm Microsoft AI MVP. I used to be Microsoft Data Platform MVP, uh, but because I'm these years actually, my most of focus is on uh, machine learning and how we can use Microsoft tools for doing machine learning. Uh, I'm actually changed to AI 
or artificial intelligence. Uh, I'm a, a consultant, trainer, speaker, mentor, and uh, in the uh, in the space of data science with Microsoft, and also uh, I'm teaching uh, five days or ten days course in R and Python and the other, and also international speaker in different conferences like Microsoft Ignite, Data Insight Summit, Pass Summit, uh, and other conferences. Uh, moreover, uh, I'm also working in a company named Radicat that actually we provide training and consulting. Uh, I have a book named Advanced Analytics with Power BI and R that actually is a free book and is available in our website so you can actually get that one and work. So uh, what I'm going to talk about machine learning. So these days actually most of companies like Amazon, like Microsoft, like Google try to kind of popularize the using the machine learning that means that it's not just for academics it's not just for a product developer they are going to provide this facility for doing machine learning in different products so people who develop the codes use creating reports also able to do machine learning and get more insight out of the data uh, you can see a chart that I'm showing to you that shows that how Microsoft try to embed it in for embedded machine learning in the products. This is a chart that I'm created. So as you see, uh, so first we have in 2014, we have a cloud machine learning data platform named Azure Machine Learning. Uh, that's kind of uh, very easy to use data a place for doing machine learning and data science but also it can be more complicated by writing the R and Python code so this infrastructure was the first one that's actually really popular there and people able to write R and Python there then in 2015 uh, Microsoft provide a specific custom visual in Power BI for R that actually you can use this custom visual to show some charts in R. So this happened in 2015 and in 2016 they introduced to write R inside Power Query from that's kind of the place for data mashup and data cleaning in Power BI. Now in 2016 be able to actually to write the R code inside there. That is the main focus of this presentation. Uh, moreover, in 2016 we have our services inside SQL Server. So uh, that is really good. And in 2017, now we have the capability of writing R and Python code inside SQL Server, which is really good. And now it's actually you can write R and Python inside Azure Data, Azure, uh, Data Lake and other products. So actually, they, in 2017, Microsoft announced a data science virtual machine that as you see, you can support, you can write any languages, you access to different data platform, you access to different machine learning and AI tools that we have in data science world. You can get benefits from different data visualization tools like Power BI, Excel, and the other, and kind of uh, deploy the results. So that's lots of possibility for machine learning inside Microsoft tools. Okay, so what is machine learning process? So the first step is machine learning process is about what is business problem. Uh, that is really actually important. It's the first step, what problem you are going to solve in your company. So that's a, uh, actually is help you to guide through the, to use which algorithm and why you should use that algorithm. The second step is about collecting the data, make sure the data has a good quality, uh, kind of following the extract, transfer, and load uh, process to get a good data from different resources. And it's not that, uh, uh, I mean, that is a start process of data cleaning. You also should to do some data process for data cleaning, like removing, missing value, uh, 
kind of removing the noise based on the algorithm that you are going to use, scaling the data for some algorithm. So uh, you need to do some data wrangling. This is a specific expression that we use in data science for data cleaning based on the needs of the algorithm. So you need to do that. And then uh, beside that, also you should do some feature selection. That means that which algorithm, which data you should consider. I can say this step takes about 90, not 90, between 60 to 90 percent of your time. So that's an important one. Then that's why important a data scientist should know the tools of data cleaning. And definitely some data, uh, uh, data tools like SQL Server and Power BI can be really important here. Now you actually have a good data and good attributes. You're able to choose the algorithm, so you choose algorithm, you uh, split your data because uh, it's a machine learning, so it should learn from data, so we put training model, uh, training uh, some data for training, some data for testing, and we evaluate the results. So this is a very general and brief description of machine learning process. Uh, for business understanding, we have three main type of analysis there. Predictive analysis, descriptive analysis, and prescriptive analysis. For predictive analysis, uh, we are going to predict, to predict what will be happen. So we have classification and regression. For descriptive analysis, we are not going to predict. We are going to see the natural trend of the data. And the last one that is prescriptive analysis, and it has more value, definitely, is kind of recommendation to people. Uh, I can say in Power BI, at least you can do all these three predictive analysis and descriptive analysis. There are some predefined tools, and also you can write the code to do these analysis. Uh, for data cleaning, and I told to you, so we can do ETL. You see that in Power BI, it's really easy to do ETL. It's really easy to do data cleaning and data wrangling, and also uh, is able to do feature selection. I'm going to show, uh, I'm going to explain through a demo that I have. So I'm um, start from a data set for Titanic. I, I'm sure that many of you heard about the Titanic disaster. That is actually there was a big actually ships and in actually big big cruise actually is a crash to the iceberg and many people die and they try to save to save people based on their specific uh, attribute. So they look at that if they are passenger class one, two or three. They also Look at that, they are female or male. The age of people also matter there. So based on these three attributes, uh, people, actually the, uh, the people, the staff try to save people. So imagine that I have a data set like this. I'm going to predict that in future, if uh, something like this happened, uh, unfortunately, I hope that has not happened, but imagine that we are going to predict the disaster. We are going to see that people with what attribute they are going to survive. So this is a data set from the past, okay? I'm going to use data set to predict the future. Among this column, I think I just need these four Column. So you see here that I think the other is not impact on the survival. For example, name of people, not impact on the survival of people. So definitely is not related. So the process of choosing the right columns that impact on the survival of people, we call it as a feature selection. So here, based on the business understanding that I have, or uh, based on the, some statistical analytics like correlation analysis and different tests, we found out that these three columns has impact on survival. So I'm going to do the machine learning to do the prediction using Power BI. 
So the first step is to get the data. So I'm going to get the data. Data is a CSV file. So I'm going to get it. Sorry, so I am Power BI. Yes. Okay, so when I'm loading the data, I'm going to edit query because uh, I'm going to do the machine learning and I'm not going to show any visualization. So for that, I need to go to the edit query. But before going to that, I want to mention some of the uh, important notation that we should consider. So before that, first of all, you need to have one R version on your machine. So you should install R Studio or Microsoft open in your machine it's really important or at least you should connect to the one of the r server so for example r open or microsoft or r studio one of them should be there after you install them so it's really easy to install now you should go to the file to the options and setting and then to options and you specify which R version you are going to use. So as you see under the global, we have the R scripting. So here we specify which R version we are going to use. I will talk about that why it matters. So this is the first step to use R inside Power BI. Install R and then come to the options to specify which R version we are going to use. So I'm going to get the data again. The Titanic data set, and I'm going to edit query. Okay, so here I'm in an environment that we call it as a power query or edit query. That's a place you can do lots of data transformation here. And to be a data scientist, uh, actually, the first step is to clean the data. So I'm going to remove the columns that I think that is not impact on the survival of people. So I'm choose passenger class, survive, uh, and the age and gender of the people. So I simply remove other columns. Uh, is still I need to do some data transformation here. As you see here on the age, I have some null value. So having the null value, that means that is maybe, uh, it's not really good to have null value. I should remove the null value to uh, have a better uh, model and algorithm. And as you see here in the applied steps, you can see that all of the data cleaning steps that I'm done actually is here you see that remove the columns filter rows and even i able to see that what rows i'm going i already filter or what columns i'm already choose and you can change them okay so i'm kind i can say that i do the feature selection i know which attribute has impact on survival people and i kind of do a very simple data cleaning uh, now I'm going to actually write some R codes. As you see on the top, we have different tabs. So the home tab is actually has some initial data transformation. So you can see working, you know, removing some columns, some rows, uh, and also merging this with other queries already there. On the tab of transfer, we have some more transformation capability here. Uh, so actually you can do that. And if you look at, at the uh, top right, you have a specific option for run our scripts. So I'm click on that. Oh, sorry, I should maybe do it after the filtering the rows. I'm click on that. And now I have a editor i have an r editor that i'm able to write the code there okay uh, uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to uh 
use uh, one of the famous algorithm that we have for predictive analysis that we can use it for predicting a group and predicting a value. So uh, for prediction, we have two things. We have predicted class. That means that in here, exactly here, we are going to predict a person belong to the survive or not survive. So we call it as a classification. We are going to predict a person belong to which group. Uh, and also, we do the predicted value. For example, you are going to predict the number of followers of your uh, website or uh, the amount of the say. So we call it as a regressions or problem. I'm going to show you an algorithm named R part uh, that's part of the decision tree that you can use it for both aims, for classification and regression. To do that, you need to first go to the R Studio. So, uh, for the R Studio, so you should open your R Studio, and then uh, in R Studio, first you need to install the related package to that algorithm. So here, uh, what you need to do, you just need to create a new R file here. And just simply write install.package R part. So R part is one of the famous package in R that actually supports one of the algorithm name decision tree. Uh, because I'm already installed it, I'm not going to install it again. I just simply library, I'm just simply refer to that to make sure that it is installed. So as you see, uh, the library command helped me to see that if the DAS package already installed and copy in my computer or not. So after you're done, so now you're able, so now you make sure that you already have this package in your machine. You just need to refer to it. So I've said that R part that. So it's the first statement. Uh, now I'm going actually to uh, divide my data set to the training and testing based on the process that I'm explaining here. So I'm going to put some data for training and put data for testing. First of all, I'm going to write some R code to get the, actually the number of the rows that I have in my data. I'm using a function name in row in R to get the number of the data. Another important thing is that the connection between the queries and data that we have in Power Query and R editor is data set variable. So all of the information that I have here, that is these four columns, have been stored in a table or we call it in uh, our language as data frame has been stored there. So this uh, sentence is actually uh, count the number of the rows and store it in a variable in rows. Now I'm going to use the another function named shuffle data. So I'm going to uh, shuffle data uh, and I'm going to use the uh, function named sample to kind of the shuffle and get some randomized data um, saying that I want to get uh, about 80% of this data to be stored in the shuffle data. Now I'm going to set, okay, my training data set. My training data set should have about 80 percentage of the data here. So this is the 80 percent. And the rest should go for training. Oh, sorry. Data set. Okay. So let me explain that what this means. So here is actually I'm kind of shuffle the data and get about 80% of data uh, row number and I put them into the variable shuffle data. Uh, 
Now I'm going here and I'm saying that I want the rows that about 80% of the rows should go to the training. So here, this is my data set. Before comma, I have the row number. After comma, I have column. So here I'm saying that I put the number of the rows that I want to put for training and uh, I put the parts for the column space. That means that I want all columns. And in the next line, I identify the rest that is about 20% of data should go testing. Simplify. And testing data set, 80% of the data goes for training and the rest goes for testing. Okay, so this is all about data. I didn't do any machine learning here. Now I'm going to actually call a function named R part with the same name as package that are uh, able to create a model. I'm going to set that survive and hope that I'm not have a typo. Survive. I'm going to predict people will be survive or not regarding the whole data. So I have totally four columns, okay? One of the columns is survive. I'm going to predict that the person will be survived by having its passenger class, the gender, his age, okay? So because there's one approach is actually I'm write them here. So I'm set that passenger class, six and age. The simplest way is that instead of saying that because I don't have any other just I have these four columns, I just simply push a dot there. And then I'm saying that, okay, my data is for training, from comes from train data set. And the method is for classification. So I put class, because I'm going to predict the people will be survive or not, it's a classification. It not, it not, it's not going to predict the value, okay? So I put class for that one. So the model will be created and stored in DT value. Uh, now I'm going to use that one for prediction. So I've said that uh, predictions and I'm saying that I'm going to use function predict. The model is DT and I'm going to use that model that I'm already created to predict the data. So this is the whole process. I just need to show the data in Power BI. So I'm use a data frame. And I'm going to see the result. So survived and the prediction. So I'm going to compare the real data set in the test data and the prediction. So I just need to do some uh, kind of name changing so we can have a better result there. So I'm going to change it to the actual. Okay. So let's see that what happened. I hope that I don't have any typo here. Yep. So, so what's happened here? As you see, I have three outputs. Look at the name. One if is pred, another one is test, and the another one is train. I want to see that what's happened there. If you look at there, you see that I have pred. Okay, I have pred here, as you can see appear here. I have test and train. So test and train. But you couldn't see DT or you couldn't see predictions there. Why is that? Because they are not in a table format. They are in a list or vector data structure. Uh, there's a we have different data structure in R. So one of them is data frame that is like table. We have list and vector. There is a one notation that in Power BI, you are not able to show the vector or list in the output. You're just able to show data table in the output. So that's why that here you see that we have pre test and train because all of them is kind of the table or data frame. 
Okay, so I can see the result I just canceled, and I'm going to explore the result by just clicking on this table. Okay, so you can see the prediction result. So actually, we create a model and then we apply the model to our test data set that was about 143 rows. So this is the actual. Uh, predict actual happen to people so one and stands for people survive and zero stands for people not survive so what the algorithm said to me it says that the second column says people who are not going survive and the number is the probability of them so for example this person it says that with 33 percent they are not going to survive but with 66 percent they are going to survive which is wrong actually so in real case they are not survive but look at the second row in second row as you see that the probability that people survive is 95 percent and in actual world, in actual data, also they survive. Okay, so it's good. I can do machine learning here, but there is a small problem here. So one of that is that I don't access to the uh, data. So for example, if you look at the code here, I have some hard-coded things there. So for example, 80%. Sometimes I want to do the experiment for 70% of the data. Or I want to ex uh, repeat, I use the same algorithm for another data set that I have. So in this case, uh, I need to come to our editor and do it. But there are some other parts that actually you can do it much more faster. So you can actually do it faster. Uh, I see that there are some questions there. I try to finish the uh, kind of the, my presentation, and after that, I about ten minutes or fifteen minutes, we can decide for answering the question. Okay, so everything going well. Uh, any uh, manuhar is everything is good. This voice and everything. Yes, Leila, all good. You can go ahead. Oh, good, good. Thank you. Okay, so this is the kind of the things that we normally do. But we are going to use some Power BI features for doing machine learning much more uh, kind of parametized. So that means that we able to pass 80% there, we able to pass the data set, okay? So we are going to make it as much more flexible regarding the data, okay? So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to uh, actually duplicate the data set so I need another data set uh, that doesn't have the actually the things I'm call it as a Titanic input so I have a original data set here uh, for this one I'm going to actually uh, create a function out of that so I simply right click and said create a function and said that, yep, yeah, create a function, put a function name, so I said that R part for classification. So it's create a function for me, as you see here. But it doesn't get any input, okay? So it doesn't get any input for that one. So we need to actually change a bit the Cool. So I'm going to the home tab and click on the function and we have an option named advanced editor. So by using advanced editor, I can make the code to become more interactive. So I'm click on that. Say so yes, edit the function. Okay, here. So this is uh, another editor and for another language that we call it as M or data mashup. So here is actually is before is a backbone of what happened in uh, in Power BI. So as you see, look at here, we have all of the steps. So we remove the other column. So you see that it's actually a code. Uh, yes, I'm just click. I'm I'm not writing any code to remove the data. But as you see that the behind the scene is a language that name is M. 
and you see that the filter rose you can see everything happen here okay so this is the one i'm going to change this code to make it uh, as much as actually uh, better and uh, be able to pass the data so here what we have is actually what happened we get the data from my local computer and as you see the address is from my local machine then uh, we actually we apply another changes on them and then we apply another and till end now i'm going actually to show you how can i instead of getting the data from local computer we can able to pass the data via a parameter so because i'm just a bit worried about that i'm make a mistake i'm going to kind of the change step by step here i will share the codes with you so uh don't worry if you actually i will share all of the steps hopefully after the session so here i'm going to set that instead of the, getting the data from local computer from the actually c drive i'm going to get it from the parameter so i simply remove the first three uh, row and i put this one so i'm saying that i want to get the data from source table but before that i should mention that how i should have the source table so here is the parameter defining in power bi so here before that i'm going to specify the name of the variable named source table uh, you see that i put double quotation here for that because it's a variable and i put a sharp sign before that because i have a space here i need to put a sharp sign here so i'm saying that this variable is actually a table and my source data should get data from this table so this is one but is not finished yet the other steps uh we need to remove the all of the data cleaning happen till run our script why we should do that because this data cleaning apply to titanic data set i'm going to create a function that uh, can get any data set and run the classification algorithm on them so they may be not the same uh, data cleaning for example they may don't have these columns so they are not useful anymore so i'm going to remove everything before run our script so this is my r scripts uh, if you just scroll to the end you see that here uh, it's the place that shows that which data should be provided for run our scripts as you see it says that it's uh, here says that filter rows so this is a previous step i don't have it again so i need to put the name of the source there so i just copy the source and i mentioned that here i remove that part and instead of it i just write Control v source that means that all data should comes from the source okay so now we are going to actually to change a bit we are going to change the data a bit and uh, we are going to apply some more changes the other changes that we are going to do so after that after the one uh, is actually uh, replace the split one okay so I'm just going to put another uh, sorry uh, to put the prediction column so i'm going to put that one so here another parameter that i'm going to talk about is about uh, changing the prediction column because the data set will be changed so prediction column also will be changed so uh let's see that how it happened i should look at the code that i have and i need to replace it with uh, uh with this variable that is prediction column so i'm going to look at the every place that i have survived so i'm going to look at that one so you see that the first step is when i'm talking about the 
R part. Uh, let me find the actually zoom it function. So maybe it's a bit bigger if I can find it very fast. So I can zoom it so you can see easily the one. I hope that fit. So here, you remember that in the R part, I mentioned that I wasn't going to predict people's survive. So instead of hard code that the survive column, I'm going to put a parameter, B, uh, said prediction columns is a parameter that's going to replace that one. Again, I use it in the other place. So if I just go to the and there was another place that I'm using. So I'm replace all of the place that I'm use survive bit prediction columns. And if you look at here, you will see that in the top, now I have two parameters, when table and another one is prediction column. So it's still not actually finished. I need to remove in resource because uh, the result of the prediction will be stored in here. I want to just show you that what we have till now. So I need to remove that one. And yep. Still, there should be a, some error there. Okay. Okay, so here I need to set that as uh, as a table. We are going to pass the data. So now it should be okay. So just have it. So now actually I'm able to pass the source table. So you see that I can see the table and I can see the prediction results. So I'm here, I've said that sir, wife, and I can invoke it, hopefully nothing happened, and you can see the result. I'm going to provide the, another data set. So in this case, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to uh, import a data about uh, breast cancer. That is a, actually uh, is a data set about patients. So we have ID of the patients, we have the status of the patients, that means that are they benign or malignant. So you can see we have B and M here. And we have about 30 columns about the cancer cell specification. So radius mean of cancer cell, texture mean, and the other information. So the main aim of this analysis is to find that the people with a specific, uh, that they have a specific uh, cancer measure, uh, are they going to become benign or malignant? Okay, so I'm just load the data here. Now I'm simply to use that one. Uh, just let me see. Yeah, diagnosis. Okay, so I'm back to the function area. I'm saying that I want to predict this one, and this is the column that we are going to predict. And just simply invoke, it asks me about the edit permission, that means that are they uh, actually apply to the data, and you can see the result here. So as you see that, it's not related to any uh, kind of the any function is actually work itself and you can see that you can apply different things so it's not finished yet you actually you're able to provide as much as information you want so here i'm just provide the source table and prediction column there is a possibility as you see in the example that i have here I'm actually uh, put the split number so you can say that instead of 80% you want to put for example 70 percentage for data or you can even change the method of the algorithm so here another method that we have is ANOVA that is used for when you are going to predict the say uh, predict the value you know not the class you're not a group so you can change even that one and you can totally parameterize everything 
there. So this is actually, you see that how is actually is easy. I'm not going through the help, uh, the process is the same. So uh, you can create the algorithm here. And uh, as you see that we train the algorithm, we test the algorithm. So sometimes uh, here, if I'm back to the code, uh, maybe let's see that I have the code in the top. So here you see that, um, make it bigger uh, I use the R part algorithm to create a model I store the model in here okay so there is a possibility to actually store the data in a for example SQL or something and just bring it the data here and use it to the prediction or you can just uh, create the model once and predict it several times so this is a process that we can do through there we can create a uh, kind of the a uh, uat environment and dev environment and uh, actually to separate them uh, and the end user just provide the data through there so do you see that how is actually it's easy to do the process so this is a one possibility uh, this is inside Power Query. So this is all about uh, kind of the process and possibility that we have inside Power Query. But sometimes you actually, uh, you may interested, so I'm just close and apply. Uh, you want to use some graphical for machine learning. So there are some predefined graphs in Power BI custom visual that you help you to do the same process. So we have our part in a visual place in a store that I'm going to show you. So to access this store, first of all, you need to log in into your Power BI account. Then you need to go to here, import from marketplace. So if you, the previous name was from store. So just click on that. And then uh, you should just wait till it's come. We have a category name, uh, advanced analytics, that there are many, many different algorithms. One of the algorithms that actually has been for a while, and it get three star also, is a decision tree chart. So I'm going to add that one. Okay, so this is the same algorithm behind it so decision tree uh, is actually used the same algorithm r part behind the scene just more graphical so i'm click on that one and i'm going to set that i'm going to predict people survive or not and based on their age and gender so here i provide the target variable and the input variable and i'm just wait till is finished there process so this is the what happened in the algorithm so the algorithm is actually this is a graphical presentation of our part that i show to you so uh, you see that it have a shape of tree okay so what's the happen at the root we have the main decision okay so it's going to see that what the best variable to divide the data so is not regarding that what data I provide here so you see that the first column is age second is pass passenger class and the third it is the gender of people but here we have gender the first variable that decision tree going to take decision so it's not related to the order that I'm choose there so here it says that for example the people who are male with 60%, with, uh, with uh, sorry, 55%, there is a chance that they are not going to kind of survive, okay? So this actually is a kind of the uh, different things that we have there. Just uh, give me a minute, it should be don't summarize. Always be careful about that. Power BI, it by default group the data, so that's why that we get uh, some strange one so here is better so we have said that people who are male and their age is less than seven years old uh, they are not going to survive you see zero here with 53 percent but if they are male uh, uh, and sorry they are greater than that one they are going to uh, they are not greater they are less than seven years old they are going 
with 40%, they are going to survive. So you see that we have different color here. We have green, it stands for not survive, and blue stands for survive. Look at the other brand. So it says that people are female and uh, actually they are not passenger class two, uh, three, they are main one and two. With 25%, they are going to survive. While the people they actually, uh, they are passenger class three and they are female, they are not going to survive. So this is the things that actually process behind the R part function that we have. And as you see that, that actually is going to uh, do the same process. Uh, so you see that there's both options. You can use custom visual to do machine learning and see the result. And you're able also to do the machine learning and just show the result using Power BI visualization. So uh, if I'm back to that one, for example, uh, for this one, I'm able to show the data there. So I just make sure it's don't summarize them. So the both option actually is available. You're able to actually see the data and actually, you know, do the machine learning using the custom visual. There are many different other visualization there, not whole algorithm cover, but some of algorithm that's really important have been covered. So for example, we have time series, we have association roles, clustering, and also uh, the forecasting one that is time series with ARIMA and exponential smoothing also there. Some of the algorithm cover, but not all of them. So this actually using the Power Query, you're able to extend and using any algorithm uh, there, so from neural network, any algorithm that you're able to write the code in R, you can actually have them here. Okay, so there are uh, actually, uh, there are a couple of the books that I want to kind of uh, share with you so yeah one of the book is machine learning with r uh, this is a book that actually i'm really interested on in that and i found it really easy to follow and i get feedbacks from people who attend my class that actually are recommended and they said yep that's really easy to follow this is really good for start to learning r with machine learning and also if you want to you know that how for the initial process how to use R inside Power BI it's a free book that I already have it it's not updated unfortunately for the six months and you know that lots of things happen change in Power BI so maybe I hope that I have time to uh, kind of the, uh, uh, update it, the book but uh, it's still good for initial understanding how you can use R and in Power BI so I think that I am totally go through the process, go to the process that how we can do through that, and I'm happy to answer the question. I have some. Uh, will Python also available in Power BI? Yes, I heard about the Microsoft team that they are going to provide Python also in Power BI, hopefully this year. So let's see that. Hope, hope so, yeah. Any other question? Um, thank you, Leila. Uh, so, we, if uh, please do post the questions in the chat window or the Q and A panel. And uh, before Leila will start answering other questions, uh, you'll have enough time to post questions. I'll just quickly run through a couple of slides before uh, Leila takes any further questions. Yeah. I'll take over the screen share. Just give yeah, me a sure. minute. All right, hopefully everyone is able to see my screen. Please do post your questions while I go through these slides. 
I just want to talk about uh, the uh, full day trainings that are available at Dell Platform Summit that are happening on 7th and 8th of August. Uh, Leila, our today's webinar speaker, is delivering two pre-cons, so I'll be talking about those as well. So first we have Dimitri Kutkovic. He's uh, a, a C Microsoft Certified Master of SQL Server from US. He'll be delivering a pre-con on how to troubleshoot and optimize your SQL Server like a pro. Sunil Agarwal, a well-known speaker for uh, Data Platform uh, Geeks. He has been a speaker in the past, and he's he's delivering a first full-day training session at uh, at the conference this year. So it will be on how to migrate your on-premise databases to Azure SQL, SQL DB, and Managed Instance. Managed Instance is in preview right now, so you'll have latest information on in this training session. Power BI from Rookie to Rockstar. Uh, Reza Rad is a uh, Data analysis and BI expert for, and a Power BI expert from New Zealand. Uh, he he'll be giving a full day training on Power BI from rookie to rockstar. Lela Atati, Dr. Lela Atati, she'll be doing a pre-con on the first day on leading edge data science with Microsoft Tools. It's it will be a deep dive of um, how you can use how you can use um, data science with using Microsoft Tools. Andy Leonard, a world-renowned expert on SSIS, he'll be delivering a session on intelligent data integration with SSIS and Azure Data Factory. Madan Gajendran is from Microsoft Cosmos DB team, he and his team, so there'll be more than uh, one speaker in this full day workshop where uh, Madan and his team will be talking about Azure Cosmos DB. Again, Dr. Lerad's second session is how to build business intelligence, uh, building intelligent applications using Microsoft AI platform. This will be an extension. So if you are if you want to completely learn uh, about Microsoft AI platform, you can attend both the sessions uh, back to back on the two days. If you are serious about R, Steph Lockie is a world renowned expert in R. She'll be doing a practical R for everyone. So this is uh, this is again uh, another stream in the data science track. Sanjay Mishra, head of uh, my. Uh, Microsoft Azure CAT team, he and his team will be there doing a full day session on how to build a data architecture in Azure. So if you are planning to migrate to Azure, this will be a very good session to attend, very good training to attend. Again, Jenny, uh, Denny and Joey are coming back this year for the fourth time continuously and they are delivering a couple of pre-cons, one on Linux for SQL Server DBS and the other one is on HADR. So, all these speakers uh, and also uh, Peter Myers will be there. Uh, he is a very popular speaker from last year, so he'll be doing a zero to analysis services pre con um, yeah, full day training on that. So, all these speakers will also be there delivering regular sessions during a three day conference. So, please plan now and reserve your seat so that you can take the benefit of early pricing in March. We, uh, if you have any questions, please do contact us at contact at dps10.com. The site for the conference is dps10.com. If um, I'll uh, hand over this to Lela to see if there are any more questions. Yes, there are a few questions. So Lela, it's, uh, you can take over and answer those questions. Sure. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I said really enjoy it. So you have step by step article to start with our language. Uh, yes, there are uh, many websites and actually uh, that you can use. Uh, so yeah. sorry to oh. stop you. Can, can you repeat the question? Read out the questions. Oh. Yes, yeah, sure. Sorry. So uh, ask me that is it actually uh, is there any step by step article to start with our language yes there are many many different websites uh, there is a website named data camp that actually they provide initial to our programming uh, there are many books that actually you can uh, use that one and uh, uh, i'm also also presenting some uh, actually article but uh, really I can show you some of them here so data camp uh, I've, I'm really uh, interested on that one that's a kind of the good for starting the machine learning and learning R or Python they have a really good environment uh, also uh, 
there are, there are different books. I myself is actually, uh, my background is not a statistic. I'm actually learning R uh, by myself, reading lots of book and web blogs. So it's really easy to catch up if you go, uh, you can start. But this is a good start for that. And also, we also provide some uh, kind of articles on that one. Uh, another question is that how to learn R basics and implement the same on Power BI? Any suggestion? So uh, you should see that what is your aim to using R? Are you going to use just for statistical analysis? Uh, then you should go for a book that actually uh, they have uh, kind of the uh, more introduction to machine learning, same as the one that I'm showing to you. So it's a machine learning with R. Some books are about visualization. Uh, I didn't talk about the visualization capability in Power BI. Uh, there are a couple of that. Uh, so you should look at that book. So it really um, depends on what sort of technologies you are going to, what sort of aim you are going to use. And so because you can use R or Python for different purposes. People use Python for programming the robots. So it's really important based on that. So don't go through the whole place. Just focus and see that what analysis you want to do and just go for that one. And uh, uh, the book that I have is a free one, so you can just go to our website and easily download that one. It's not cost, actually. Uh, that's a kind of the introduction, a bit about R, a bit about Power BI. So you can actually download that one. And uh, I can send the link uh, to Manuhar about the book. I couldn't find it here, sorry. Maybe should go there so this is a one but still I'm saying that you should see that what's your analysis and what you're going to do with R so I think so there is no other question yeah am I right yes there's no question. yes um, so if you do have any further questions you can also post that in our Facebook group and uh, we'll be able to answer your questions sir. oh yeah that'd be great thank you Thank you, Leila, for the wonderful session, and uh, hope uh, everyone is uh, interested in attending the full day conference and uh, full day trainings from Leila as well at the Terra Platform Summit. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Oh, thank you, Manohar, for hosting me. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.